There's nothing remarkable about the K1000. In fact, the fact that it's very plain is probably why it's so famous. All it requires is a battery to operate this beautiful little needle, which shows the exposure, and everything else works mechanically. No autofocus, no electronics, nothing. Because of that reason, it's been called the ultimate beginner's camera. It's a camera that every teacher recommends for their student, well, at least back in the old days. So today, we're here with trusty assistant Derek, who has used many cameras, but not the K1000. And I personally haven't used this for maybe 20 years. So we're going to take a blast to the past in Tycoon Prison Yard. So then, we are in these school uniforms today because this is a student's camera. So we represent the two kinds of young student photographers, the naughty art kid and the sports jock. Sports jock. We are like styling ourselves. Well, Anne said that we should style ourselves after like Japanese school children. Um, there were some miscommunications. Well, you told me to bring a, wear what, you, what you're wearing, but I don't have any of the clothes, so. I went for the PE outfit. We can pass for like 30 school year old yeah. school boys, I guess, in some weird. We stayed behind 11 years. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we were really bad at school. Yeah. Um, so, Pentax is for kids like us, just absolute morons. Like, we don't know how to use anything. This is, this is the beginner camera. Um, so, we're gonna try to go back to school, learn how to use this thing. Break some rules. Break some rules. It's commonly called one of photography's greatest cameras. And the funny reason for that is because it's an enabler. Teachers consider it the ultimate beginner's camera since it doesn't really age you in any way and forces you to learn the basics. You don't have to turn it on to shoot. The shutter speed goes up to 1 over 1000 and has a few standard increments. There's a built-in meter and the screen is bright and clear. Right now, it's actually surprisingly expensive on eBay which is probably because its reputation precedes the actual camera. It's good for sure, but there are plenty of other SLRs, even Pentax ones, that are way better. Okay, one more. So we were told there are 200 security cameras and lots of staff, so we gotta be respectful of the space. I was trying to get on that bridge and it's a labyrinth, so they designed this prison like a, I don't know, actual labyrinth? That's bad. <laughs> I've been here like three times. From the introduction of the K1000 in 1976 until 1997, Pentax sold over 3 million units. The cameras were made in Japan until 78, but for production was shifted right here to Hong Kong. It wasn't until the 90s that like everything else in the world, it ended up made in China. And the Japanese ones, for those that care, have the old Asahi Optical Company logo and the Asahi Pentax name, while the Chinese models just have Pentax K1000. Uh, I haven't used one of these for like a long time, like I said, never owned one. This is your first time yeah. using it, what do you think? Uh, it's good, very simple to use, uh, love the needle. Yeah. yeah, so pretty much the needle was like the main thing which is unique about it now. Um, it's not the only camera which had a needle exposure, lots of cameras from that era did, but you know, you don't see them all, too often now and then, uh, today. Usually we have like the plus one, minus yeah. one, but the, this, the arrows and the dot. Yeah, but yeah. there's something kind of physical and relaxing about finding that mm. perfect spot where it yeah. just rests down. And I guess if you're a beginner, it's like, if you, even, you know, like I was nine when I used this, you're like, tell the nine-year-old, wait until the needle gets in the middle. Can't, Turn get, the no can't yeah. get any more simple, I guess. Yeah, I remember watching this video recently, like, like, two, like yesterday, where this photographer was posing this like Japanese girl, and it's kind of like posing him with like, cute, of what? Like, like, like cute stuff, like a fan or something. Oh. So then like. Is that what you want me to go for? Yeah. One, two, three, go. Oh no, again. Ready, go. <laughs> Wait, is that naughty? Derek, what are you doing? Wow. 
Wanking. Good. Wait, Derek, what are you doing? Wanking. Why? Well, that's what rebellious kids used to do. That is true. That's what rebellious kids used to do. So, dude, tell me about your first time. Well, my first time was a while back with my uncle at a wedding. And he gave me his camera for me to use. It was a Nikon DSLR, if I remember. Um, never used the DSLR before and absolutely fell in love with photography, shutter speed, just everything. I didn't know how to use it, but he kind of taught me throughout the whole day, he gave me the camera for a couple hours. He missed a lot of good shots because I had the camera. But it was fun, and then ever since then, I absolutely love taking photos. My first time, yeah, uh, was uh, in the back of an amusement park. Okay. Uh, in Maryland, you know, down the woods, right? A little bit dirty, but made do. Um, it was a uh, photo class at this uh, great place. I remember my sister was taking a class there. Okay. Um, how old were you? I was like nine, just the first nine. time. This is the very first time. So then she was doing photography class and then she somehow got asked my mom or asked me to like do the class with her. And then like I loved it so much. I remember like I, I think I really liked the like the outdoorsiness of it, the chemicals, you know, like there's a range of people with <laughs> the chemicals. <Yeah. laughs> when you first started taking pictures, right? If, if yeah. you sh if you just started today and you're using like a Sony A9 or something. Like, have you seen how many autofocus points that thing has? Like, a lot. It has like, yeah. well, I don't know, 400, 500 points. So then if you're like an absolute beginner, you're starting off, you got this like beast, which basically, it isn't even just focus. It knows how to focus on your like, your eyes and like all that stuff. And then you go back and you think about this thing. You have to do it manually. You, you do manually, and then and then I guess like that's not to again romanticize it because like we don't need to be like oh you know the old days were better, but um, but I do feel like there if you're just starting off there is something that you would lack like a fundamental understanding of like what it feels like to just how difficult it is to like move do stuff and achieve focus at the same time because like in the old school like old days like those guys would you know like photojournalists would. They wouldn't miss, well, they would miss a lot of shots, but then basically they'd always be like focusing as you're moving. And then um, it was a skill, I guess. And then, um, yeah, I mean, that's. I guess that's a trade off. It's a trade off. Like, if you went back to this and you shot with it for a month, like, I'm sure at this point now you would be fine technically, mm -hmm. but then if you were just a beginner, it would be like. It would definitely slow me down. It would slow me down, right? It'd be hard. I know I said I shouldn't romanticize the camera, but symbolically, emotionally, I can't help but associate some memories with it. I used to go to the dark room during my lunch break, after school, and occasionally on weekends. It was a dedication born out of both boredom and desire. I had nothing better going on in my life. Suburbia was a slow death, and I thought perhaps photography was a way out. In the decades since, I worked in a bunch of different fields, but by some twist of fate, Anne and I now work as videographers and photographers. Every day we practice and have fun, just like we did at 19, just like I did when I picked up the K1000 in 1999. The lesson something mechanical like this teaches me is that it's never too late to go back to the basics, back to learning a new skill like videography, back to practicing, and back to failing. The first few times I used this K1000, I remember countless photos that were wrongly exposed. Details would be lost, the focus would be off, and compositions were all over the place. These are the reasons why teachers recommend the K1000. It's the beauty of the process. Remember those mistakes. Acknowledge them. And even in digital, you have a far more intuitive relationship with your camera. Hey guys, thanks for watching as always. If you guys liked the episode, please consider supporting us on Patreon. So as you guys know, we don't exactly do YouTube as a full-time job, but what we do use the Patreon money for is to buy film and development and also to get cameras like the K1000. Uh, this time, what we're going to do is uh, we're going to give it back to you guys. We bought the Pentax K1000 from Camera Film Photo, and then we want to give it to one of 
our viewers. Uh, this time Derek and I shared the story of how we first got into photography and uh, we want to hear your stories. Uh, we're not going to be judging necessarily the best photo, but just the best story. So all the details are going to be down in the bio. Please check it out. I hope you guys participate because we want to be sending this to one of you guys anywhere in the world very soon. Uh, see you guys next time.